So, Tony Jefferson's worst nightmare was relived. And he had to talk about it on the Twitters. So, what had happened was, Saquon Barkley took to the Twitters to say, name a colder highlight tape than Tavon Austin's. And he was talking about Tavon Austin at West Virginia. To which Tony Jefferson says, oh, you talking about my nightmare? You talking about when our defense coordinator had me responsible for the D-gap and anything coming across the middle? You mean when we had a six foot two, 190 pound nickel safety playing middle linebacker in a dime package? You mean that, that game? Because what people don't remember about 2012 OU West Virginia isn't necessarily that Kenny Stills caught a game winning pass, 24 seconds left to go for OU, who was ranked number 12 at the time, to beat West Virginia, who finished 5-5 five and five that season, 50-49. to 49. That's not what people remember. People don't remember Landry Jones had one hell of a day with six touchdown passes going 38-51 of 51 for 554 yards through the air with just one pick. They don't remember that. They don't remember Damian Williams carried about 22 times for 92 yards. Same Damian Williams that ends up helping Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Don't remember that. Don't remember that Jalen Saunders had seven catches for 123 yards and was a bad man. Then I remember that that defense had two picks of Geno Smith. What they remember is Tavon Austin carrying the ball 21 times for 344 yards with two TDs. Just, just vaulting into the NFL over OU's defensive dead body. And Mike Stoops losing his mind. And my favorite story about that entire game ain't watching Tony just try to run down everything and Tavon just going oh cool he'll a hole there it ain't a guard just t-fying on Julian Wilson at middle linebacker every time they want to run the ball because <laughs> it's Julian Wilson after the game tearing into Mike Stoops <laughs> talking about I don't do that kind of stuff what do I look like that ain't what I do that's not who I am because Mike had no idea what to do with Dana Hogerson's offense and Tavon Austin, who was a wide receiver, until Dana had the bright idea to put him in tailback. And then my man averages 17 yards a clip <laughs> and in a game that OU should have won going away against the team that finished 2-5 and five in the conference was had to be turned into a thriller. I was, <laughs> I was dying laughing. And I was also... Biting my nails all at the same time, just going, okay, cool. It ain't Mike. Mike ain't got his mojo. It, it, it's time. It's time for Mike to go. Mike, Mike forgot what it meant. He, he, he can't come out here with this four three defense, and then found out. No, this is not the Big Twelve that you left in two thousand three, where the worst thing that ever happened to you was Darren Sproles tearing apart your defense in the Big Twelve championship game. Uh oh, wait. There, there's Darren Sproles' revenge. His name is Tavon Austin. Because even in the early aughts, we're talking about, hey, I-formation, you know, spread kind of, sort of was in there, you know, mostly with Oklahoma. But most of the time, you were handing the ball to a good running back who was going to try to tear you up. And then you had, you could run your 4-3 defense. You could have your Roy Williams types, right? That You could still play safety. By the time Mike Stoops figures out what he's supposed to be doing in the Big 12, you have the likes of, Eric Stryker playing what he said was the same position Roy Williams played. To which I'm going, wait a second. Eric Stryker is an outside linebacker standing up in a 7 or a 9 technique rushing the passer. If that's who you think Roy Williams would be today, we are in a world of hurt and trouble. Because the one thing that Eric Stryker could not do was run with dudes and play safety. And then when you come to think about it, Roy Williams is one of the best defensive backs to ever play college football. So is it that Mike Stoops had misevaluated Eric Stryker? One of the prodigious pass rushers to come through Oklahoma in the last 20 years? Or is it that perhaps Roy Williams would have been an even better edge rusher than he was a safety? Which boggles the mind. Right? Because talk about you know a dude that, that quite literally won the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award. You know, as the nation's best defense back. He gave the award away last year. Like, that's how good he was. We asked him to give the award away at, at the Home Depot Awards. What if that dude was playing edge? That's what I thought of, right? It's like, wait a second, timeout. 
That's what you got. And then we had Mike change his entire defensive philosophy from 4-3 to 3-4, and that ain't really work. <laughs> he, he fell into Jordan Phillips, who ended up going in the second round and is having a great career in the NFL. And then Jordan Wade was kind of sort of serviceable. Didn't get to finish out. See, Neville Gallimore actually should have probably been playing a one-eye or zero technique in a, in a four-man front scheme, right? Instead of just being the only dude responsible for occupying two and three guys at the same time. But Jefferson was going off on the Twitters because there was a time period for which Mike only trusted Tony Jefferson to make tackles. And he would funnel the defense to where Jefferson was likely to be. And this was on a defense that had guys like Corey Nelson. And Nelson was probably the best linebacker that Mike Stoops had ever had an opportunity to coach outside of perhaps Curtis Lofton. I know y'all feel some kind of way about Teddy, but I don't. I know some of y'all feel some kind of way about Rocky, but I think that Corey Nelson could have been a better player. And the way that people really love Travis Lewis is the way that they probably should have loved Corey Nelson. He was that good. And I think that Nelson's best years were pissed away in that scheme because Tony's great. Tony's good. Tony's also a safety. And you can see what happens when you put him at strong safety and let him just do his thing, which is tackle everything that moves as opposed to saying, hey, go and run with all these dudes. He did it at Arizona. He did it at Baltimore. He's going to have the opportunity to do it elsewhere, I think. But he was a safety. And the idea that you would have to move Julian Wilson to middle linebacker before you move Corey Nelson to middle linebacker speaks volumes about what you understand about your personnel, your scheme, and what you ought to be doing. But now I went back to look at this game because this game is is one of those all-timers for me as a dude watching OU football, right? It's like that one. The Patrick Mahomes-Baker Mayfield game is taking on an entirely different tenor than it had. We had Mahomes going for 734 yards through the air. You had Joe Mixon going for like 260 yards through the air and like 200 on the ground. Mayfield slinging it all around. OU has been in some absolutely outstanding shootouts and been fortunate to be on the winning end of most of them. But this game will forever be the game for which I'm like, oh, yeah, this, this is when Mike had to go. This, this is when the train had left the station and continuing to look at this team that was ranked number 12 in the country at this time and having to go, hey, Kenny Stills is on this team? Damian Williams on this team? Landry Jones was good in college, right? You keep going through the list of dudes that was on this team and you see that they had to put up 50 to win by a point against a West Virginia team that was mediocre and whose best player probably wouldn't make the Cowboys roster right now. It tells you a lot about scheme. It tells you a lot about what Mike Stoops thought he was seeing with the air raid concepts and what he expected Dana White to be able to, or Dana White, Dana Hogerson to be able to do. And when Dana basically said what he'd been saying all the time, hey, if you let me run the ball, I'm going to run the ball. <laughs> Mike did take him at his word. 